Edinburgh, a city renowned for the elegance of its main street and its international festival of culture. But we've come to celebrate with the people of northern Edinburgh the worldwide festival of Advent. Last week in Africa we lit the second candle on our Advent wreath. Today we light the third candle here in Scotland, a symbol of the Advent hope coming into all the world. The streets we've come to aren't in the famous heart of Edinburgh, but out on a limb, as it were, in the sprawling estates of Drylaw and Muir House and West Pilton. These areas grew up in the post-war years to meet the urgent need for people's housing. But people need more than houses to live in. They need places to meet and play, places for work and worship. They need to, buildings they can be proud of and that are good to look at. Some of the houses here are now being given a facelift. Others look desolate, almost derelict. Yet in this urban desert, hope does bloom in oases of community where people come together to worship God, to enjoy each other's company and to tackle the social evils which have given the area a bad name. They look and work for a better future for all the people of the area as they celebrate in St Paul's Church the Advent hope in the hymn Hark the Glad Sound, the Saviour Comes. Woodward has lived in this area for over 30 years. This area is one where there is a lot of unemployment. Uh, physically, it's not an uh, attractive place to look at. And many of the, the houses and many of the systems of houses looked pretty stark and depressing. But you can't um, create a community just by putting up bricks, bricks and mortar. You have to think about who's going to live there, how they're going to live there. And I think that is a big problem, that people who design estates don't live in them. The planning for people's opportunity to work, people's opportunity for leisure and recreation are not given sufficient priority by people who are in power, 
and these people feel very much that they are the powerless, they have no influence over the decisions that shape their lives. The, the gospel is at the same time a personal and a social gospel. It's about good news to the poor, the oppressed and the depressed. It's not the question of talking about the afterlife. We must talk about people's day-to-day -day living. And that's where Christians must get involved in issues that matter, that affect folks' lives daily. Some people would say this is a godless place. How does God show his love? God's love comes down at Christmas, and not just in the, the vision of a gentle Jesus in, in a manger, but this Jesus who works through, uh, who fights for people, who tries to change the systems that uh, oppress people. And a lot of people have redefined their understanding of the Christian message in saying that who is my brother, who is my sister? And if we continue to work through that in the churches, then we will have other people who believe that we are sons and daughters of God. The hymn, God is Love, His the Care, to me has a special meaning because it shouts loud about God being truth and beauty and good. And it also mentions that Jesus tended uh, and cared for everyone everywhere, wherever their problem was. And I think those of us in the church need to shout that and need to sing a song of praise that affirms that God's love is there for all of us. Donachy has only recently come to live in this area. Michelle Faulkner has lived here all her life. Well, actually, it makes me really angry and annoyed that people from outside can actually say that it's a bad area when they've never lived or visited the area. People just come out in from town and think, well, I'm not going into Pilton, it's a really drunken and druggy place, but it's not. There is ordinary people living ordinary lives, and it's a very big community. Also, if there's anything needing done, the folk are always willing to do them as a community. Families coming in help in crises or in, with the flooding season, and there's always people willing to give old people blankets, etc. Where do you think God is to be found here? Everywhere. And we get a lot of responsibilities in the area, and um, God's always with us when we have to do these kind of tasks and challenges. Um, I can walk through the streets and know that God's with me and I sort of lose my fear of what people think is a bad area, which I don't believe. 
um, is always with us wherever we go and whatever we do. Cassie, you've only recently come here. What do you think about the area? I think it's terrific. There's a lot going on. I must admit, before I moved here, I'd heard some terrible stories about how rough it was, and it's not like that at all. There's a lot of unemployed people here, and a lot of single parents, who actually come up to Craig Grayson High School. We have approximately 400, nearly 500 adult students enrolled in the school between day classes and evening classes. And most of the people I've met at the school are unemployed or single parents, and they just don't want to sit in the house vegetating and doing nothing. They'd rather come and do, do some O levels or learn new skills by doing woodwork or computer classes. Hopefully, that they'll get jobs in the future. Cassie, are you always conscious of the presence of God, as Michelle says she is? Yes. I'm involved in the worship workshop at the church, which is for kids and adults. And I feel his presence very strongly there. And I always feel he's there guiding me. I've had a lot of strain from the church that I didn't expect to have. Um, I separated from my husband just over a year ago and I found the church was like somebody's shoulder to cry on. I could turn to anybody in that church when I was feeling a bit down and somebody would understand and could speak to me and make me feel better. I like how God reigns because it's so full of vitality and it's the way we should be singing about God. Dermid and Peggy Ferguson are both members of SAFE, one of the many organisations working in the area to help victims of drug addiction. It's run from St Paul's Church by Father Tom Williams. The group formed as part of the church's response to the problem of drug misuse in families. And more recently we have been directing our attention to those young people who carry the burden of knowing 
that they are HIV positive or with AIDS. Our parish here is run by the Salesians of Don Bosco, who founded the order. And Bosco was a man who devoted his entire life to the welfare of young people. And it's our young people today who are the most vulnerable and most at risk in this area. After a few years, he'd he gone through the mall, the heroin. And a friend in my mother's told me about a rehabilitation center in Cardross, the West of Scotland. And then um, I went through there to give it a try. Paul was an addict who's managed to get off drugs. But there's always hope. I mean, I don't believe that any drug addict, any person that's using drugs is a hopeless case. I mean, there might be people that feel that they are. Um, but uh, it's a case of finding something. That there's always something there for somebody that will replace drugs. Peggy, what would you say is the greatest difficulty parents face in relationship with their children when they become addicted to drugs? The greatest difficulty really is the change, the change in personality, the change, uh, it distorts the whole personality of the, the, the son or daughter. And it's almost like talking to somebody in a glass case. The parent can see the, the child, but they just know that they're not getting through and it's quite frustrating. What a person in that situation has to do is try to separate their son and the daughter from this um, person who has the drug addiction. It's still the same person, but with the drug addiction, they seem changed. But inside, it's just still the same, the same um, person they ever were. Sometimes very frightened, um, full of fears, and feeling very isolated and alone. And you visit some of the families. What hope can you give them? I think um, hope isn't really the word. Um, I think you must show them uh, there's love, there's compassion. Um, I think uh, in themselves, if they have hope, then they'll, they'll cope with that themselves. It's a matter of them, um, it's really just friendship you're offering, the hand of friendship, which they usually readily accept. You're involved in all this work personally, but how far do you think the church should be involved in it? I think it's very important for the church to get involved in it because um, that is the gospel in this day and age. Uh, where there's a need, it must be fulfilled by the church. I was brought up in what you would call a good Catholic home, and um, up until I was 16, I carried on with that, and then I, I fell away Churches seem to be full with older people all the time and that sort of thing and uh, I fell away from it. Once I went into rehabilitation though, um, there, was, there was a mass, there's a mass in Cadros every Sunday and a lot of people would, went to that, a lot of residents, so I started going as well and um, then it, it was different, it, it was different altogether because here I was in a chapel with a priest and 20 or 30 other junkies sort of thing, or roughly the same age as me. And uh, it took on a whole different outlook altogether to what, what Mass was all about. And um, I began to actually enjoy it, enjoy going to Mass, and I had a good, happy feeling when I come out of Mass.
something to do and somewhere to play. There are many community initiatives to cater for them. One of them is the Mud Hut from your house under 12s. The organiser is William McPherson. This is an under 12s and parents centre which has been set up by Save the Children Fund for work in this community. Many people here have been failed by the system. Many of the parents have been failed by the system. The system, society, has not equipped them for long-term unemployment, for real poverty. And inevitably, that must lead to frustration, depression. And as a society, we need to try to help people. We try to develop programs, both for parents and children, which enable them to gain wider experiences, to take them out with their own community, but also to develop initiatives here in the community that improves their education, their recreation, and their socialization. We work with the community, not for them, and their involvement is quite extensive. The aim of the project is to set up this resource, train them on how to run it, and then withdraw, leaving behind the bricks and mortar, the plant, and the expertise to keep this project running. There's a real excitement amongst the people and a real eagerness to be involved for their children and for the community as a whole. McVeigh was Edinburgh's Citizen of the Year last year. I've heard you called a real fighter. <laughs> Who are you fighting against? Uh, authority and bureaucracy. Um, I think I've got up to fight because of the injustices that's happened to people living in an area like this. How does an area like this relate to the Great Edinburgh Festival? Well, there about four or five years ago. Um, a group known as the Pilton Action Committee ran alternative tours into the parts of West Pilton that the tourists wouldn't see. And it was quite hilarious because we had Swedes and Danes and Americans and they were given tea and biscuits. 
and they were shocked horror to find that Edinburgh had more than the castle and the palace and the theatres and the shows and that the real people actually were surviving um, in houses like some of them that the programme has seen. I think people have to realise that Edinburgh isn't all Edinburgh Festival come August and um, that people have to carry on living an everyday life in areas like this and sometimes that's difficult especially in winter time you're living in a damp house it gives them no pleasure to know isn't it nice come the summer time we can all join Mozart concerts where do you find God in a place like this? Well, I find him in the woman next door <laughs> in what way? Um, I think people here give each other a lot of support and strength especially when things are bad and especially when people are at the lowest a lot of people um, find that that's where they get most of their, their support, is with their ne fellow neighbours. Now what are you doing in serving God yourself? I think I'm fighting for him, for one thing, and I think I'm um, carrying on doing the kind of work I would imagine that you would want people to do. Now, you've chosen a hymn. What is it? It's Here I Am, Lord. Here I Am to do what? Uh, to carry on fighting. <laughs> tonight will be led by Alan Fisher. I worship here in Muir House Parish Church because this is where I stay. These people I worship with are the people I see every day um, as I move around the parish on my way to work or at the shops. And these are the people I've chosen to worship with. It's part of, I think, the whole package of living here in Muir House to worship at my local parish church. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David and the virgin's name was Mary. He came to her and said, Hail, O favoured one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at this saying 
and considered in her mind what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How shall this be, since I have no husband? And the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your kinswoman Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For with God, nothing is impossible. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord. My soul is filled with joy as I sing to God my Savior. He has looked upon his servant. He has visited his people and Ministers of the area join together to lead our prayers. Lord, we thank you that you left your place in glory and came to live among ordinary people. You used fishermen and tax collectors as your helpers. Enable us to bring to others the love we have found in you. And may the gifts of your spirit, joy, peace and kindness be present in our community. And so may we learn to care for our neighbour. Jesus. You were born in darkness, that all might hope in the dawn. May we be a people of hope, bringing good news to the powerless. 
Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come unto you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Go in hope to love and serve the Lord. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.